Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. All right, we're going to do a couple of trips down memory lane, if you would. And uh, y'all remember Sesame Street? Y you remember Sesame Street? You know, you know, one of these things is not like the other. You know, Cookie Monster and all those guys. There was a thing that they would do. And the thing that they would do is they would say, today's episode of Sesame Street is brought to you by the letter B or the number three or something like that. Now, we're we're going to note this. The today's episode of Fighting for the Faith has a Sesame Street-like sponsor. And I'm putting that in air quotes just to let you know a little bit of a walk down memory lane. But let me set things up for you. Today, we're going to be listening to, watching Isaiah Saldivar. Now, if you don't know who this guy is, we've done one video on him before. And let's just say that he'll be making future appearances on Fighting for the Faith. And there's a reason for that. And that is, is because this guy is a false teacher, a false prophet. He has a huge platform and he is dangerous. There's just no way around it. So what we're going to do today, let, let, let me kind of help out a little bit here. I'm going to whirl up the desktop. That's right. That's the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan skyline photo I took back in September of 2019, pre-COVID days. And uh, let's, uh, let's add into the mix our... <clears throat> yeah. So throw up our web browser, and we're going to note, today's episode of Fighting for the Faith is brought to you by the word bloviate. That's right, the word bloviate. If you are suffering from bloviation, or if your pastor is suffering from bloviation, this could be a terrible, terrible thing. But to bloviate means to talk at length, especially in an inflated or an empty way. So Isaiah Saldivar, we're going to be noting here, not only is he a false teacher and a false prophet, he's all of the above, he is also prone to bloviation. We're going to watch a salient example today of Isaiah Saldivar bloviating. Yeah, that's right. He'll be bloviating. And to kind of add one more uh, one more thing into the mix of um, you know, nostalgia, if you remember the Fighting for the Faith audio podcast, which, by the way, I'm maybe bringing that back again because it needs to be brought back again. Uh, th there was a thing that we would do. We would do updates on what we called the Prophetic Holy Orders Network Information Exchange Syndicate. Yep, that's right. Prophetic Holy Orders. Yeah, this this might help. The visual might help. The Prophetic Holy Orders Network Information Exchange Syndicate. And I would note that Isaiah Saldivar, he is currently playing for this team. He is definitely one of the members of the Prophetic Holy Orders Network Information Exchange Syndicate. And, uh, and, and I make no apologies for pointing that out because you'll, you'll see as this episode develops, and it's not going to be that long of an episode, not only is he going to bloviate, but this proves that he's part of that group. I, you know, I'm just saying, just saying, you know, so let's, let's do this right. <clears throat> I need to warn you. And that is, is that what you're going to watch is going to, is going to be some kind of prophetic utterances. God is speaking to Isaiah Saldivar. And this was from the revival conference at Fresh Start Church in Arizona. And he is, he's there to whip up the crowd into a, a frenzy. And to, in order to whip them up into the frenzy so that they can feel like the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully and stuff like this, he's going to engage in large gasping bloviation, bloviations. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and here's what I mean. He's, he's going to prophetically utter something and go, and then prophetically utter something and go, and, and just, just do this weird thing. But we'll note the, the bloviation along the way and where the scripture warns about guys like Isaiah Saldivar. Again, he is absolutely playing for Team Prophetic Holy Orders Network Information Exchange Syndicate. Just saying. So <clears throat> prepare yourselves. You might want to brace yourself, uh, put your tray tables and, uh, you know, and, and seat backs into the upright and locked position. This is going to be a bumpy, bumpy ride. Here we go. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. How many of you came to go to battle tonight? How many of you said, I'm not letting the enemy hold back my praise? I'm not letting the enemy hold back my worship. I'm not letting the enemy hold back my shout. I came with the Holy Ghost shotgun today to let the enemy know, get your hands off my family. 
came to church today with a Holy Ghost shotgun. Hmm. I didn't know there was such a thing. Have you, I, wait, you know, the last time I heard somebody talk like this, oh, I know. It was, well, it, it was Benny Hinn talking about his Holy Ghost machine gun. Hmm. Okay. Get your hands off my marriage. Thank you. Keep it loud. Thank you. Get your hands off my ministry. I just want to preach prophetically. If you're a pastor in this room. I just want to preach pathetic. I mean, sorry. Prophetic. It's time to let the enemy know you are getting off my church today in Jesus name. I came to drive the enemy out today. We are driving the enemy out. We are not negotiating with darkness. We are not negotiating with the enemy. We are not negotiating. He's a shouty man. Um, do you think that shouting like this somehow has any authority or power? Okay, I, I would remind you, th this reminds me of somebody. And let's talk about how effective this particular technique is when it comes to overcoming the dominion of darkness. Uh, let us go back in time just a little bit, shall we? See if this rings a bell. We'll exercise judgment right now. Because we in have- In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It still cracks me up. <laughs> oh, we're doing this now. Okay. Oh, Jesus. You know, uh-huh. Standing in the office of the prophet of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, oh, yeah. This, 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 such authority. I mean, this brought the entire COVID-19 thing to a screeching halt. We haven't heard about it since, since March of 2020. I execute judgment on you, mm. Satan, you destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, you get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand, oh. I demand, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. <laughs> How effective was that? That is another example of, well, our sponsor for today. Today, again, this episode of Fighting for the Faith is brought to you by the word bloviate. That is a perfect example of prophetic bloviation. That's right. Talking at length, especially in an inflated and an empty way. And that right there is Ken Copeland bloviating prophetically pathetically, uh, regarding the end of COVID-19. And of course, it didn't do anything because in the NAR and in many charismatic churches and now, sadly, in many evangelical churches, they don't teach people how to pray anymore. No, we don't pray because praying is asking and then asking God's will be done and stuff like that, right? No, we decree, we declare, we command, we control. No, we don't. That is just utter nonsensical bloviation, right? And here, Isaiah Saldivar is pulling a Ken Copeland. He is prophetically bloviating here and not saying a thing. He's not asking God for nothing. Watch what he's doing. Waiting for our family. I hear the Lord say, I've given you power to drive him out in Jesus' name. I've given you authority to drive him out in Jesus' name. So I just want to start out tonight saying depression, we are driving you out in Jesus' name. Really? Really? Oh, wow. You know, so there at Fresh Start Church, Arizona, depression has been driven out. Now, has it really? Is depression something that has ears that can listen to you like this? Huh? This is bloviation. Religion, we are driving you out in Jesus' name. Anxiety, we are driving you out in Jesus' name. That's right. Do you have an anxiety disorder? Well, good news. They've driven out anxiety at Fresh Start Church in Arizona. Name. I'm not going to sit by while anxiety plagues me. COVID-19. <laughs> While well, anxiety torments me, I am driving out anxiety. I came to tell somebody that there is no fear here, that I come against the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of Jezebel. I come against the spirit of... Oh no, the spirit of Jezebel is running, fleeing from the building. Ah! Right? No. This is nothing. This is as effective uh, as what Ken Copeland did in March of 2020, in declaring judgment on COVID-19. And Isaiah Saldivar is doing the same shtick. Now, where in scripture 
does it warn us about things like this? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Jude, yeah, written by the half brother of Jesus. Yes, Jesus had brothers. I, you know that Semper Virgo thing is not a thing. So uh, here's what Jude, the half brother of Jesus, says: Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith. By the way, if you've ever wondered where does the name "fighting for the faith" come from, it, it's a it's a paraphrase of Jude verse three: Contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Why? Why do we need to contend for the faith? Why do we need to fight for the faith? For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. They are ungodly people. They pervert the grace of our God into sensuality, and they deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels, who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he is kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in like manner, these people, listen to the description, this is a false teachers, rely on their dreams, they defile the flesh, they reject authority, they blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he didn't presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people, these false teachers, they blaspheme all they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them. They have walked in the way of Cain. They have abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's heir, and they've perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love feasts, as they feast with you without fear. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they're waterless rain clouds. What good is a waterless rain cloud? It's, it doesn't help at all. Waterless clouds swept along by the winds. They're fruitless trees in late autumn twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. You, you kind of get the idea here. So here's Isaiah Saldivar rebuking depression of all things, rebuking anxiety and, and letting, and, and prophetically speaking, the Lord has given me authority, given you authority over all these... What are you talking about? Okay, James makes it clear in James chapter 4, you do not have because you do not ask. Is Isaiah Saldivar asking God to heal those who suffer from depression at Fresh Start Church in Arizona? Nope. Not asking God for nothing. Is Isaiah Saldivar humbly asking God to have mercy on those who suffer from anxiety and other things like cancer and other ailments there at Fresh, Church, Fresh Start Church in Arizona. No, he's, he's not asking God for nothing. No, he's, he's instead, again, I would remind you, today's episode of Fighting for the Faith is brought to you by the word bloviate. He is bloviating, and, well, sorry, wrong bloviator. <clears throat> he's bloviating here, and oh yeah, he's coming against the spirit of Jezebel, coming against all kinds of spirits, and coming against depression and anxiety, and blah, 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 blah. He's acting like a crazy false teacher who instinctively is blaspheming all the things that he does not understand. Right? Of Leviathan, I come against the spirit of the Antichrist. The Bible says that there is a spirit in... Oh, wow, the good news. Isaiah Saldivar has defeated the Antichrist. He has come against the spirit of Antichrist. Oh, that poor Antichrist spirit, he doesn't stand a chance. Uh -huh. The end time church of the Antichrist. And today we call you up and out in Jesus' name. I will not let the enemy rob me of worship, rob me of praise. Come on, I dare.
dare you to do it just to make religion mad just to make religion mad take your seat take your seat there is something happening in this room that trend yeah there's something happening in this room called deception that's the thing that's happening in that room right there what your emotions feel that transcends what you feel in the natural there are some of you tonight just keep it loud thank you so much they say isaiah i don't feel it in the natural i'm watching everybody else i don't feel it in the natural because it ain't happening these words have zero power. Isaiah Zalafaz Zaldivar has zero authority to rebuke depression, anxiety, the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Praise and everybody else worship and everybody else sing. And I don't feel it in the natural realm. Friend, we are not waiting on emotions. We have to. <laughs> the reason you're not feeling it is because nothing happened and God isn't behind any of this. I don't feel it, but I'm praising in the spirit realm. I'm worshiping in the spirit realm. See, God is transcendent. We are praying and contending for a higher vision. You're not praying. You're not asking God for anything. How on earth can you be contending for anything? We are praying that the kingdom of God, where am I at today? That the kingdom of God would be established on earth as it is in heaven. And here it comes. One of the classic twists of the false teachers. All right. So, so here, here's how it goes. You know, they're at Bethel Church in Redding, California. Yo, the, Bill Johnson pulled this stunt. Oh, we got We got to bring heaven to earth. It's all about the physics of heaven coming to earth, right? And well, it says in the in in the in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, "Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven." And well, is there cancer in heaven? No. So that means in order in order to bring heaven to earth, we we we're gonna we're gonna know it's here because there is no cancer. Look it up. He said it. Uh, what happened to uh, Bill Johnson's wife? What'd she die of? You, you'll note that in heaven, there's no deafness either. What about his son? Huh? How's that working out for them? Right? So this is a classic twist, and that's not what Jesus is saying. So let me let me pull up the <clears throat> Bible real quick here. So Jesus teaches us to pray, Matthew chapter 6. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, here's the issue. In Greek, we have an interesting construction here. Uh, let, me, let me explain what I mean here. So, your kingdom come. So, el theto he basileia su. El theto is third person aorist active imperative. Again, and then the next one, your will be done. Genes theto tathelemasu, your will be done. This is an aorist passive imperative as well. Here's the interesting thing. Eris passive imperatives, let me give you a better way to translate it because you're still asking. Okay, that's how the construction work. It, 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 these are like uh, petitions uh, in the Eris passive, and here's how it would be translated. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's, that's a good way to translate that, that Eris passive there. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And my question that immediately comes up is, what are we praying for here, right? How is God's will done on earth? Well, I can specifically point out the fact that it is not God's will that any should perish. And I can tell you definitively that God's kingdom comes to anybody who hears the gospel and is brought to repentant faith in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, where they repent and lament their sinfulness and their iniquity and their guilt and their shame, and they cry out that God would have mercy on them and forgive them. We can say the kingdom has come when somebody is brought to repentant faith in Christ, right? That's what this is talking about. Now, you'll note there's a lot of things that are not in heaven that are on earth. For instance, there is no marriage in heaven. So are we saying that we've brought heaven to earth when we eliminate marriage? No. So you're going to note here, Isaiah Saldivar is claiming in the moment, the Lord has spoken to me. You have the authority to do this and that. And blah, 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 right? <gasps> yeah. As he sits there and gasps for breath, right? 
yet he's twisting the Lord's Prayer to make it say something Christ never intended for it to say. And yet he's putting on airs as if he's got a direct line to God, the Holy Spirit, while he is prophetically uttering this stuff and whipping these people up into a frenzy. Why didn't the Holy Spirit knock him over and go, hey, wait a second there, buddy. Why are you twisting up my words, right? Why are you twisting up the word of God? Mm -hmm. He's a false prophet. He's a false teacher. He is absolutely the, one of the newest and greatest members of the Prophetic Holy Orders Network Information Exchange Syndicate. Let me back this up just a little bit. We are praying that the kingdom of God, where am I at today, that the kingdom of God would be established on earth as it is in heaven. We are believing that because there is no sickness in heaven, that there will be no sickness in this room, that because... Because there's no sickness in heaven, there's going to be no sickness in this room. How's that working out for you guys, right? You know, because this was streamed a month ago. Did any of you guys get that uh, influenza A? How about MERS? Or did any of you get co uh, COVID Omicron since then, huh? How, how's the no sickness in this room working out? It isn't working out at all, is it? There's no demons in heaven. Help me today. There would be no demons in this room. That because anxiety doesn't exist in the kingdom of God. That in Total twisting of scripture. Proof that this man is a, well, flim flam, scam, phony. You get it. Would not exist in this room. That because depression doesn't exist. See, God is desiring to make your life reflect his kingdom. Oh, right. Yeah. So in order for it to reflect his kingdom, the sure sign that your life is reflecting his kingdom is you are not sick at all. N no, th this is absolutely satanic. Because what does this do then to the person who ends up with a cold or a flu or with cancer or an anxiety disorder or depression? It's all their fault, right? God wants your life to reflect his kingdom. There's no sickness in heaven. And well, your life isn't reflecting that. So it's got to be your fault, right? This isn't Christianity. I hear the Lord saying tonight, and listen, I know we're on. I hear the Lord saying tonight, no, you're not. God is not talking to you or through you. Isaiah. In our eighth service, there's been a lot of amazing preaching, a lot of amazing services. I feel like, man, what can I even say? I know Tony Suarez preached last night, do it again, and I'm preaching tonight, preach it again, because I'm going to preach what's already been preached. But here's the thing, the pressure's been lifted off of me. You've already gotten word after word after word. If you allow me, I just want to flow prophetically tonight. I just feel my... No, no prophetic flows. Yeah, that, that the only... Yeah. That's a misnomer. These are more like sewage flows. This is not this is not prophetic. This is just absolute utter well this is a spiritually transmitted disease that's flowing here, not the Holy Spirit. My assignment tonight is to challenge somebody to go to another level in God, to challenge somebody that we need to go higher in God, that I'm not okay with where I'm at. I woke up this morning agitated. I woke up this morning frustrated. In fact, I spent about three hours. Who talks like this? Hours in prayer, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual. And you're going to know, how long can you maintain this, this exuberance, enthusiasm, and euphoria? And then you're going to come crashing hard. You're going to end up, you know, like, like, like having a you know, major withdrawal afterwards. You're going to be flat as a pancake after whipping your emotions up like this. I just want to show you where I'm at today. And I've preached here over 30 times. I'm a son of this house. So I could preach it how I feel it. I don't have to apologize. Here comes the humble brag. I'm not going to apologize for preaching bold. I'm not going to apologize for casting out demons. I'm not going oh, I'm talking to some pastors in this house. I'm yeah, I'm a pastor. You're definitely not talking to me. I'm not going to apologize for laying hands on the sick. See, God is saying to the leaders in this house and the pastors in this room today, it's time to stop apologizing to unbelievers. It's time to stop apologizing to culture. I'm not going to apologize for my shout. I'm not going to apologize to my praise. God has raised Fresh Start Church up to be an unapologetic voice in these last days. See yeah, it wasn't God that raised up Fresh Start Church, if this is what they're getting for preaching. None of this is biblical. Not That's not even Christianity. This is a prime example of, again, uh, our sponsor for today's episode of Fighting for the Faith is the word bloviate. That is some 
some serious bloviation that we heard going on here. And again, to bloviate is to talk at length, especially in an inflated or an empty way. And Isaiah Saldifar, that is what we call prophetic bloviation. I haven't seen it quite done like that in a long, long time. But I know exactly what this is. This isn't Christianity. You're not flowing in the Spirit. That's not God the Holy Spirit talking to you. These are completely empty words. And thankfully, the scriptures have warned us ahead of time of guys like you so that we can mark and avoid you the way we're supposed to. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share this video is down below in the description. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.